So if you're dealing with chronic sinus infection issues, in this video I'm going to help you understand why these issues most commonly show up. I'm going to help you understand why a lot of people have them keep coming back over and over again, along with some steps you can take to turn some things around and some information about other trouble these infections can be creating. I also want to share a connection with these sinus issues that might freak you out a little bit. Let's get at it. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So some things to keep in mind when we're looking at chronic sinus infection type problems is that these infections can be either fungal, bacterial, or, or viral. And some people may even have like a combination of the situations. And I'm going to put a link in the description below this video to a study that showed us that for some people when they use antibiotics it'll wipe out all those bacteria but if it was a fungal issue it's really not going to create improvement there but what the study was showing us was that when people use antibiotics for some of them once they wipe out all the bacteria in the body whether it was good or bad it kind of sets the body up for fungal issues to then thrive. So if somebody's using a lot of antibiotics to try to get rid of their chronic sinus infection issues but their infection was fungal or maybe they wipe out a bacterial problem but then set up the body for a fungal issue to come on later. So it comes back and like, oh man, it, it came right back but it might actually be a, a different infection. So there's a lot of things to think about when we're looking at these sinus situations. Another thing is a lot of people think, oh here's my sinuses but you can see that there's a lot more in-depth stuff and when you look at this model you can kind of see there's all these little nooks and crannies and places for all these bad guys to hide and the real problem is that a lot of these microorganisms can hide behind what's called biofilms and basically these are just organic structures that they can hide behind and can protect them from things like antibiotics and other antimicrobials so a person will take steps to wipe out their sinus infection and they're like man it did nothing I felt better for about an hour and a half and then I'm right back to where I was and a lot of times it's just because these organisms are hiding behind these biofilms and we sometimes need to take steps to get through those to really wipe the infection out. Another thing we want to consider is that sugars and high carb foods have the ability to feed some of these types of organisms. So if you're having a chronic situation where you really can't get rid of it or it's really coming back over and over again and man am I sure annoyed by this but I'm going to go ahead and have some toaster pastries. Well you might need to change your diet a little bit to set your body up to deal with these bad guys a little bit better. Sugar has the ability to restrict the immune system from functioning correctly in some cases. But also if you're going to feed the bad guys and let them have a happy party then you're just making the situation worse. So that's one thing that some people can do to improve their situation. But when we really want to look at steps to wipe out these infections instead of if we're not going to do an antibiotic because we're concerned that maybe it's going to create a fungal issue then we can look at some natural antimicrobials and I'll put a link in the description below to a study that showed us that GSE really has the ability to get through some of these biofilms and wipe out some bad guys and GSE is just grapefruit seed extract and that's something that you can get at most health food stores and a person can take that internally and they can also you think use things like garlic or oregano and you can use this supplemental or you can even just include that in your food you know consume a little bit more garlic and oregano and that has the ability to take some things down a few notches but what I hear from a lot of people having success with is using a neti pot or some type of nasal flush situation and you can find the videos on how to do a neti pot if you've never done one it's kind of freaky you kind of let the water go in one nostril and then it goes up to your sinuses and out the other nostril kind of feel like you might be waterboarding yourself or something like that but it's not so bad once you've done it a few times and it usually people will have this neti pot salt that they'll put in there and kind of the salt helps rinse things out but you can also put very small amounts of some of these other type of things I used to put a drop or two of the GSE in with my neti pot to help rinse out all these bad guys and it really helped me turn some things around by doing that and to really explain the situation that I was dealing with I want to go over this interesting connection that I found and I'm going to put a link in the description below to a study that showed us that there was an increase in chronic sinus infections with PPI use and PPIs is just a proton pump inhibitor and this is what a lot of people use for acid reflux 
to turn off the body's ability to produce that acid so that the acid doesn't come up and burn them and create all that damage to the esophagus and all those bad things that we don't want to see. But the problem is that in this study, they really showed a connection. And, and I want to kind of explain that what I went through to help you understand what could be going on here. Because I lost my voice for eight years and it was a reflux issue and I had some other issues going on. But one thing I had going on was a chronic sinus infection. And I didn't even really know about that because I didn't have a ton of sinus problems. If I got a cold or something, the sinus would get a whole lot worse. And some people experience that because if you think about it, when the immune system is fighting off some other kind of invader, then maybe there's a problem here in the sinuses that it can't keep in check anymore. Maybe it was holding everything down to an even keel, but once the immune system has to do all this other stuff, then this sinus stuff kind of takes off and you see all those symptoms. But what I had going on is I had an acid reflux going on. And what I didn't understand is that there's a valve at the bottom of this esophagus called the lower esophageal sphincter. So food comes in when that opens and then we're supposed to acidify that food. The, food, the stomach should make hydrochloric acid or HCL. That's supposed to be made in the stomach. And then it acidifies that food and that acidity is what triggers that LES valve to close so that we don't get reflux back up. So most people that are having acid reflux are actually having reflux because they don't have enough stomach acid. And then the small amount of stomach acid they have is coming back up and burning them. So what does this have to do with sinus infections, whippersnapper? Get to the point. Well, what was going on is I had this sinus infection that was feeding down through my esophagus into my stomach. So when there's not enough stomach acid there, then we can have a bacterial overgrowth because this stomach acid doesn't just help us digest our food. It's frying all the bad guys that come in on the food that we're eating. They're supposed to die in an acid bath. So if someone doesn't have enough stomach acid, then the bacteria come in. They're like, oh, this is a nice place. Let's set up camp here and we'll just have a keg party and raise some kids and have a good time. And then they thrive and flourish. And the problem is that some of these types of microorganisms have an alkaline waste product. And then that alkaline waste alkalizes that stomach even more. So now you have all these microorganisms in the stomach where they don't belong. You have this LES valve not closing correctly because it's triggered by stomach acid. So we have reflux coming back up, but we don't even feel it. We don't know we're having the reflux because there's no acid there to burn us and tell us that there's a problem. So these microorganisms come back up and they come all the way back up and come up into our mouth and can come up into our sinuses. So is that the reason why that study was showing the connection between the PPI use and the chronic sinus situations? I don't know, but that would make sense if you're setting up a stomach for other microorganisms to thrive there and they have the ability to come up, it could create chronic sinus issues. For me, I had this chronic sinus issue. I learned about the acid reflux and the lack of stomach acid. I took steps to wipe out the bacteria in the stomach to clear out that infection. I took steps to restore my stomach acid function and I fixed everything. Everything was great. And then a few months later, it would all be back. And what I didn't understand was that this chronic sinus infection that I had that kept feeding down into my stomach was causing the problem to come back over and over again. And it appears that it can go either way. You know, maybe there's a problem here that keeps causing trouble up here in the sinuses, or maybe it's the sinus problem that's coming down here. What we know is that we really need to fix both situations if there appears to be issues in both areas. So what you first might want to know is, do I have low stomach acid? And we'll put a link in the description below this video to our video on 10 signs of low stomach acid. And you can go through and look through those. And there's things like, oh, am I burping or am I bloated? Do I have constipation? There's a variety of things that can show up. Most people won't see all of those signs if they have low stomach acid, but things like acid reflux and those things, that video will kind of show you Oh, are there signs that maybe I am having low stomach acid? So if that's a problem, a person needs to correct that issue. And a lot of people will do things like supplement with betaine HCL. And betaine HCL is just a supplemental version of the HCL that your body is supposed to make on its own. And a person might not be making enough stomach acid for a wide variety of reasons. They don't need to be taking a PPI or have taken a PPI in the past 
to have stomach acid function not working correctly. There's a lot of reasons that a person might not be making enough. But if they aren't, they can supplement with betaine HCL capsules or maybe a little apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar can help acidify that stomach a little bit. But for most people, apple cider vinegar is only going to help if they just need a little bit of a boost. Most people with a real problem are going to need to supplement with betaine HCL. But they might also need to take steps to wipe out any type of bacterial overgrowth that might already be in that stomach because if that alkaline waste from a bacterial or some type of microorganism overgrowth in the stomach, a person might be making some stomach acid but that waste could be neutralizing it and making it ineffective and opening up the door for any other bad guys to come in and, and set up camp as well. So if there's an infection in this sinuses that's feeding down in the stomach, and then turning off that stomach's ability to acidify that environment, it can really open up the door for just about anything else to come in. We wanna shut that door. We wanna shut the door after we take steps to wipe bad guys out so that we don't keep having the same problem over and over again. So once we can make this the acidic environment that it's supposed to be, now we have that barrier and the bad guys can't just come in every time we bring in something on the food that we're eating. So if you want to learn more about dealing with infections or restoring digestive functions that are malfunctioning, my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, chapters three and four kind of walk you through figuring out which aspects of digestion need help and then steps you could take to improve those. And the book is available on Amazon, but I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can get the whole thing totally for free. And then you can just jump to chapters three and four and kind of go through that process. But you can see that if a person is having these digestive issues where everything is not working correctly, and a person has some type of infection up here in the sinuses, it's really about fixing both of these systems. And that means that you might need to take some steps to get through any type of biofilms and really wipe out the bad guys in the sinuses, but then make sure that this acid function is working so you can close the door. We don't want more bad guys coming back in and creating the same problem over and over again. So right now, if you want to figure out if that low stomach acid issue might be part of the problem for you, you can jump over and check out that video on 10 signs of low stomach acid to get more insights there. I can't wait to hear about your results.